Welcome to the Blue Cafe, we bring you stories of faith, love, and devotion. Yeah, just kidding, please help us grow by hitting that like button. Now on to the story. My Nightmare Life All comments welcome advice my current life is nothing short of a nightmare. Here is my story. My first real Reddit post. I'm 35M and my wife is 33F. We were high school sweethearts, married for 12 years and together for 15. We have three kids together, wonderful healthy kids. She grew up in an extreme Christian household where sex wasn't a topic of discussion but more of a taboo, you save yourself for marriage, husband and figure out the rest later, so she did. Her first time was on our wedding night. We had a healthy marriage or so I thought anyway. Always made time to talk and listen to each other. I work away from home so I'm gone every other week. We both have great jobs and are doing well financially. After we decided we were done having kids we talked about breast implants, seeing my wife's body change so much for giving us our children, and decided to go ahead with surgery. Very nice indeed, certainly helped my wife gain her confidence back about herself. I've always been into fitness and going to the gym so we bought some workout equipment at home and she began to use them. Wow, she made great progress and she wanted to share that with others so she talked to me about wanting to make an Instagram fitness page to show her journey. I shared my concerns with that and the negative attention that will bring but ultimately decided to support my wife's new hobby. I get home from work one day, on International Women's Day, a few months later to my wife crying and telling me she needs to show me something, someone had sent her a nude picture of herself, a bikini photo she had uploaded to Instagram, saying they found it on a porn site and just wanted to let you know, when in reality they used a nudify app to generate the image. This killed me inside seeing the pain it caused my wife. We talked about getting rid of Instagram but this was not enough for her to do that. Over the next few months her posts changed from helping people and documenting her journey to showing her body off with less clothing. August 2021 I have my own health concerns with left testicle pain that lasted for two months, many trips to the doctor and having an ultrasound clears me of cancer, what a relief. In the meantime my wife starts becoming emotionally distant and I'm trying to figure out why. In October I'm still struggling big time with my libido and drive for life, I get tested for low testosterone and it comes back well below low normal average, doctor tells me they need a second test before starting on hormone replacement. The second test comes back in November at the low normal cutoff limits and they tell me they can't proceed with treatment and that I'm fine but recommend antidepressants, which I decline. That week I got another blood test from a hormone replacement clinic and booked in for consultation in early January. Early deck 2021 rolls around and my wife loses her uncle and her grandmother seven days apart, a major loss for the family. I come home from work early and take extra time off work to support my wife because she isn't doing well at all. It killed me inside having to go back to work after two weeks knowing my wife is still grieving such loss. January 2022, I get approved for my hormone replacement therapy and take my first shot of testosterone Jan 13th. Two weeks later I'm already feeling like I haven't in a very long time. We are going on a trip to Mexico for two weeks and I'm having the time of my life with our children. My wife tells me that she can't believe the changes I've made in literally three weeks and that I'm a 10 tenths dad and husband. A few weeks later I'm at work again and am reading articles on emotionally distant spouses and midlife crises. I sent her those links and she agrees that does sound like her but she's hot sure why. I then came across an article that read the top 25 signs your wife is having an affair. I'm reading this and am blown away that my wife has 2225 in my opinion. I decide I'm going to confront her about this but not until I'm home. March 10th D-Day, we went out on a date night and I genuinely had a great time. I sat her down and told her I'm going to talk for 15 minutes and want you to listen and you'll have plenty of time to reply. 
I read her the top 25 signs and she says wow I can't believe you think some of those of me, I reply telling her this is the time to clear your soul and whatever has been bothering you needs to come out, I thought it was a drunken one night stand from the summer. The tears start to pour and the long silence develops before she tells me she has been having online sex affair though Instagram, sept 7 deck, showing herself to another man, lives overseas, while he pleasured himself. I'm in disbelief that she could do this but I think it's something we can reconcile over pretty quickly. I then tell her if there's anything else that it needs to come out now. She tells me this is going to kill us and cries even harder now followed by minutes of her not talking, I'm preparing for the worst. She tells me she is having an affair, AP met on Instagram, and it started a week after her grandmother's funeral and only a few days after I took extra time off work to be home. It was only a few times she said, it ended in January. As I come to find out this is normal for only half truths to come out and only as much information as to limit the damage and fallout effect of the affair. A few days of seriously talking all day and night with no sleep, all the details started to come out that the affair was alive and very much active until the night I confronted her about it. Thousands of text messages and averaging 4 hours of phone calls a day. They would meet in random parking lots in the back of a truck, hotels, AP's home, and the last time in my own home, App spent the night, with our three children sleeping upstairs while I'm away at work. 11 confirmed times in 2.5 months but as high as 15 to 20 as she can't remember all the dates she told me she was headed to the gym but in reality meeting him in a parking lot, she has a IUD, no condoms were used. I asked her to pack her stuff and move out, the kids had the worst week of their lives. Here we are today, both going to individual counseling and have a first MC scheduled for next week. She basically told me she had written me off and we were going down the path of divorce, cheating is never justified, in her eyes until I made a miraculous turnaround by my hormone replacement and this drove the guilt and shame even harder of what she was doing. She started her personal counseling while she was in the middle of the affair. There's been no contact with AP since March 18th. She's regretful, remorseful and wants to do anything to make this work, she is back in the house. She has been tested for ST slash HIV and pregnancy. She's reluctant to have sex or even kiss me and through open discussion has admitted she is having a very hard time getting over the affair feelings and the withdrawal from it. AP, 33M, has zero assets, can't hold a job down and lives in an apartment with his mom. What about my needs? Obviously not wanting to be a doormat here. I'm not wanting this to work just for the children either. Questions, comments, concerns all welcome. Cheers.
My Nightmare Life, Part 2 Update. Update. Much has transpired since my last post in mid-March. Looking back I wish I took the advice of people on here who reached out and genuinely cared. The hardest part is accepting the reality that all is lost, unfortunately I found out the hard way, by my own doing. Reconciliation was attempted between mid-March after I let her back in the house to the end of April. Too many warning flags, giving compliments to other men at the gym in front of me, withholding sex list goes on and on. She pushes me out on purpose at the end of April saying this is so hard and that she needs some time to figure her shit out. I said I agree we need healthy time apart where we aren't seeing anyone. She ended up renting an Airbnb in the beginning of May and was reluctant to give me the address of the place but ultimately did. I drove by one morning and see her AP's truck parked a block away, not surprising at all, as I'm driving by I see her and AP walking out of the alley towards his truck, I turn around and pull up door to door, AP is inside the truck, she didn't have time to get inside so she is hiding ducking down behind the tailgate, I rolled my window down and said real impressive you lasted one day on your own, I pull to the back of the truck and she runs to the front and hides by the hood, so I left and cancelled her cell phone that was on my plan. Two days later she showed up at the house with her bags packed wanting to come home, said she's sick of living this shady lifestyle, I said that's a good decision but you're not welcome to stay here, go stay at your stepdad's, she agrees. Mother's Day rolls around, she wants to do something with the family. I disagree, she calls a few hours later and invites me to a movie. This time I agree. We all go back to the home and the kids go to bed. I ask her to leave later that night and she says she is tired so she doesn't leave and falls asleep on the couch. I go upstairs and see her old cell phone on the table so I decide to go through it, find evidence in pictures and messages of the affair. Finally, I wake her up and confront her about it. She goes ballistic and long story short police show up and she's arrested and charged with assault at 1am. Three weeks of no contact and not allowed to visit the home end when the charges are dropped by lying on her police report, she wants to meet, I agree, she wants to work on things, I'm hesitant but she's a mess and I take that as finally being remorseful. I rented my own place for 5 days and ended up moving back home on the 5th day May 29th ish. Mid-June, things are going okay but not well, communicating has improved drastically but there's no intimacy at all period, she won't even kiss me. Her phone still has a password I don't know about. We are in bed one morning and at 6am her phone rings, she tells me it's her AP, she told me she blocked it but then unblocked it. I said I'm sick of the shit and threatened to leave, she agrees to block again. I have all my lawyer paperwork prepared for separation at this point, I have a fire in the backyard one night, she's at a neighbor's for a glass of wine, she comes back a few hours later and I dance with her outside for the first time in years, try to kiss her, she pulls away, I'm like WTF, try to be intimate later but it was so bad I ended up sleeping downstairs after. The next day she forgets her phone and I slide the screen down but can't get into it but shows email notification from her AP. Another dagger to the back, I confronted her, she lied and said she didn't message him, he must have got her email somehow. I go downstairs, pull up her email and read the entire conversation that's been going on for days behind my back. I show her, she breaks down, I said I'm filing for divorce the next day, I leave. She calls me 15 times over the next hour, I don't answer, texts me to come home, she's having a breakdown. I return home hours later, she calls her AP while I'm there on the phone and tells him it's over. AP asks for my blessing to pursue a relationship with her if we don't work out, I laugh, she hangs up. Mid-June to July she made some changes, was very positive reassuring me she is in this for the long haul and that it could take years to get to the place we think we can. I quit my job on the road and take a new position to be home every night with my family. I start my new job on July 25th, she pushes me out again. We go for a walk. She says it isn't working and doesn't think we can get there but never says one time she wants to separate or divorce. We had a friend's wedding to attend that weekend but I got my new work schedule and couldn't make it. 
She reached out to her AP again and spent the next three days with him after the wedding. I filed my paperwork. August she was served, I listed our home and it was sold in one month including possession date. Separation agreement was signed this week. I'm in a much better place over the last few months being free from this madness which ultimately I created for myself trying to do everything possible to help this woman but she isn't the same one I married 12 years ago, obviously and unfortunately all at my expense. Everyone said she would do it again, I didn't want to believe it but deep down knew it would happen. Kids are adjusting well to their new home with me shared custody, and I focus my time and attention on them at all times. She's not with her AP anymore and he is apparently heartbroken. Recently she tells me I'm a great man, great provider, husband, father, all the qualities she's looking for, says she knows she won't find another man with even 50% of what I have to offer, but she isn't sexually attracted to me but hasn't ruled out getting back together someday. Going forward I can live with knowing I tried everything possible to work on our family unit, she did not and that's something she will carry to her grave. Until next time, triple threat. Isn't sexually attracted to me. But also maybe someday. Oh absolutely when she can't find anyone else and you become plan D tell her to duck off op. That's an unbelievable line to give anyone, man or woman so true, she assumes that he will always be there waiting for her to return. So typical of cheaters, Op will come to realize that his life is so much better without her in it. This means when I want stability and a provider back I will come back when cheaters tell you how great you are and blah blah blah. Don't engage. If they ask why just say you're a liar and a cheater, any words that come out of your mouth are not genuine, your actions speak louder than words. Great minds buddy. Don't be anyone's plan B, she'll just cause you more heartbreak. You are worth much more. Stop talking to her about anything but the children. Seriously, just get away from her. She's toxic to your future happiness. Already done. But hasn't ruled out getting back together someday. I hope you responded with let me just rule that out for you, we are never going to get back together after what you have done to me. Sir, just move on. Dafuk. Wow. Is your name Job? You gave her so many chances to get her head on straight but it was in the affair fog. I don't think I would have given her one chance but you gave her multiple chances to end the affair but she didn't have any respect for you or your marriage. Sorry for your trials and tribulations but you are better now with her basically out of your life. Be sure to focus on your physical and mental health. We hope that by sharing these stories with interested folks like you, we can help people recognize the signs of a relationship in trouble, and avoid so many of these heartbreaking situations yourselves. Have a good day or night. Wherever you are, 